Stories that I ate this month. Stories that I ate this month. You can't spell stories without or. <laughs> Off the hook, but the phone never rang. Beast on the beats, no claws, no fang. It's been a busy month, but I managed to finish two books. I watched a bunch of TV and movies. Let's get into it. Bring your crew and fight the whole gang. The first book I finished this month was our May Book Explosion Book of the Month, and that is The Princess and the Fangirl. This month we worked with Quirk Books. I don't know if you read Geekerella by Ashley Poston, but I absolutely loved it. It was one of our Book Explosion Books of the Month in 2016. It was adorable and wonderful in all the ways I love contemporaries to be. The Princess and the Fangirl is a companion novel. You don't have to have read Geekerella, but you'll get much more out of it if you have have read Geekerella because there's a lot of characters that show up again in this book. And while Geekerella was a play on the Cinderella story, The Princess and the Fangirl is a play on the Prince and the Pauper story, which I love. I love the Mickey version when I was little. And then I also love It Takes Two with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, which is also The Princess and the Pauper. We've got the princess who is a movie star, Jessica Stone, who plays Princess Amara in this big sci-fi adaptation that's happening. The whole thing takes place at a Comic-Con. She's there to do panels and stuff and she does not really want to be attached to a big fandom like this because everything she's experienced in this fandom is negative. She feels like she's always being hated on by the fans. This book really explores the toxic nature of fandoms. There's so much positivity that comes out of being involved in a fandom but there's also this negative toxic side that can be really hurtful and harmful and she's experiencing that all the time. And then we have our other lead Imogen who looks a lot like Jessica Stone. She goes to this con every single year. Her mom's run a booth in Artist's Alley. Through happens chance, Jessica Stone is late for a panel and people are out looking for her to pull her to this panel and they find Imogen and they think that she's Jessica Stone. And Jessica is running to this panel and she's late and she gets there and there's someone on stage already acting as her. And she's like, what the fork is going on? We go from there. It was so much fun. I loved it. And I'm so looking forward to the next installment in like the Geekerella companion books. Ashley's doing at least one more and I'm pumped. The next movie that I watched this month was Detective Pikachu. And I didn't think I was gonna wanna see this movie. And then I saw the trailer and I was 100% sold. It stars the kid from Paper Towns, who was fantastic, comedic timing on point, and Pikachu, who was played by Ryan Reynolds, and together is just magic. Their banter is fantastic. I grew up with a vendetta against Pokemon because I didn't understand it. Every time I tried to learn it, I like just didn't get it. I didn't get why people liked it. Pikachu in cartoon form, didn't think he was cute. Pikachu in IRL 3D form, oh my god, my heart melted. This is adorable. I just like the cutest thing I've ever seen. In third grade, I really pushed the Spice Girls and I remember having like a war with the kids in class and there was like the Spice Girls side and the Pokemon side and I was on the Spice Girls side and the rest is history. I don't understand Pokemon the game. I tried again in fourth grade because everyone was obsessed with it but I couldn't get it. Anyway, relevant. Detective Pikachu. So I go to this movie because I think the trailer looks fabulous and John was excited. He loves Pokemon. And I love this movie. The chemistry between the actors, the dialogue, everything that came out of Pikachu's mouth made me so happy. And it got like really dark at one point and I loved it. I just, it was very funny and I enjoyed myself immensely. I don't think it was like the best movie ever in terms of plot, but I don't, I, don't, I really enjoyed it. And I'm gonna give it an A minus. Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu, Bellissima. The next book that I finished this month was Romanov by Nadine Brandes. This was sent to me by HarperCollins, who I'm working with this month. I've been audiobooking this all week because reading with my eyes was going very slow because I had too many things to do. I needed to be able to read it while I was doing other things, so I got the audiobook. From then on, I flew through this baby. I was listening to this audiobook over BEA BookCon at night as I got ready for bed stuff. And there was a point where I was brushing my teeth and all of a sudden I started flipping all my shirts. Okay, and Kat's in the next room and she's like, what? What's happening? And I'm just like, I did I and I was dying. I had such a great time reading this book. So if you don't know, Romanov is an Anastasia retelling, but it's like a whole nother take on it. I went into it you know, expecting the animated Anastasia that we all know and love, that, that storyline. But this Romanov is so much more concentrated on family. So Anastasia, or Nastia, that's what they call her, and her entire family has been exiled. And it's her family living basically under house arrest, surrounded by Bolshevik soldiers. And it's how they're coping with that and moving forward. And in 
in this world, so there's magic. And Rasputin was the family spellmaster. He's part of the reason why they were exiled in the first place. The people started to distrust spellmasters and think that the royal family was just a puppet for the spellmaster. So there's all this mistrust and propaganda, and the Bolsheviks ended up on a vendetta to kill all the spellmasters. So the family has lost their spellmaster, and Anastasia always wanted to learn from Rasputin and, and become a spellmaster herself. The magic system is super cool in this book. So you use spell ink to write out the spell, and that's how spells are put into effect. So you need to know how to write certain spells in order to put them into effect. You can't just like wave a magic wand or do an incantation. You need the ink. The ink has to be made and the ink has to be put onto the person or thing that the spell is being put onto. So she has a tiny bit of spell ink left and she wants to use it to save her family who's all under house arrest and aren't doing very well because they're not being treated well. I loved all the family relationships. I just didn't expect this story at all because I'm so used to the regular Anastasia. This goes off in such a different direction. There's so many different relationships between Anastasia and all her siblings and Anastasia and her father and Anastasia and her mother and Anastasia and what she wants to do with her life and the guards that are surrounding them and a sort of romance starts to bloom between Anastasia and a guard and I just loved all of it. It was so good. If you like Anastasia, at all. If you're into Russian history, this is historical fiction. I love the Russian accents in the audiobook. The audiobook was really great if you want to do the audiobook. If you don't know, I'm an Audible affiliate. If you use my link in the description, you can get your first audiobook for free. The narrator, she does a British voice when she's just narrating, and then whenever she's speaking, Nastya's voice comes out with a Russian accent. If you don't know, Russian accents are actually my favorite accents too attempt to do and I really enjoyed listening to an entire book full of Russian accent. Also, sidebar, how amazing is this cover? The next movie I saw this month was the live action adaptation of Aladdin. Now, on the subject of Disney live action films in general, I don't have the most positive thoughts thus far. A lot of people love, love, love Cinderella. Like, we're obsessed with it. It had like a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I went to see it very excited because it's such a good rating. And I just think in terms of Cinderella movies, it was like the most boring one. Have you seen the Brandy Cinderella? Have you seen Ever After? Like this is how I would rate Cinderella movies that I know. Ever After, we've got Brandy Cinderella, then we've got Hilary Duff Cinderella, and then we've got the cartoon Cinderella, and then under that, I would put the live action Cinderella. I just didn't get the hype there. She spun around in that blue dress for like five straight minutes. I was like, I get it, I see the dress, it's pretty. But like, is that why the movie's a 90%? I don't know. I don't know. And then Beauty and the Beast, everyone was so excited about that. And I think that had like something in the 80s on Rotten Tomatoes. I just don't see the draw of the story so much. I just don't understand the love for the beast. I hate that guy. And so I can't love that movie. I have yet to see the Jungle Book live action, which is now on my list of things to see. I just never saw that cartoon as a kid. Now, Aladdin is a whole different story. I was very excited for Aladdin and also at the same time had very low expectations because Aladdin is my favorite Disney movie. Aladdin and Mulan are my two favorites. Aladdin was the first movie I ever saw in theaters as a kid. It's the first one I remember seeing. I came home and I really wanted a pet tiger and I thought pet tiger was like a legitimate thing that I could get. I remember my dad saying, okay, we'll get you one. And I was so excited for my tiger. But then I learned that you can't actually get a real tiger as a pet. And I was very sad, but I did get a stuffed animal one that I loved and cherished for years. So I was avoiding trailers and then I saw the Rotten Tomatoes rating and it was like 50%. And then I saw the movie and it was magical. I loved it so much. I was dancing in my seat. I loved Will Smith as the genie. I like, honestly, I don't understand the 50% rating at all. At all. Like, apparently, we don't see eye to eye on the Disney live adaptations, me and Rotten Tomatoes, because this is the best one I've seen. I remember I tweeted afterward because I was so excited about how much I loved it. And the first thing someone said was like, really? Did you really love it? Because the reviews are really mixed. It was like, what? I say that I loved it if I didn't love like would I re would I go on Twitter and really oh Prince Ali that whole part I was just like do, 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 do. oh my god you never had a friend never had a friend the music is so good and everyone was nervous but how it was gonna be with Will Smith as a genie and I think he did a fantastic job I was smiling my face off a whole new world I cried I it was so good I just I loved it 
and I loved what they did with Jasmine's character. Like she had a purpose, she had thoughts, she had much more of a role. You see a little bit more of the politics so you understand the motives of more of our characters. Jafar was weird, but he grew on me. Aladdin, the guy who played Aladdin had me from like the, the very first second. I had a crush on Aladdin as a child. He was my cartoon crush, I loved him. And then this Aladdin, I was like, I don't know, I don't know, and then Five minutes in, I was like, oh man, he's so charming. I love him. He's amazing. Everyone has a problem with Jasmine's song in it. Honestly, I was like, whatever, I'm going with it, it's fine. But apparently it's not enough like the Aladdin music. It's kind of like a music video moment in the movie. I didn't give a crap, I was into it, I was rolling with it, it was fine. I had the best time. It's the only live action film that I want to watch again thus far. Lion King is coming, and I love The Lion King as well. I'm a little nervous because when I saw the most recent trailer, I was like, ah, ah, it just, it's just like lions. <laughs> They're just like animals. You see Timon and Pumbaa and you're like, whoa. They are not cute IRL. The cartoon versions of all these animals are so cartoon-like and human and cutesy. And then you see like real animals just talking. I'm sure it'll be great. But right now, just in little pieces, I'm like, whoa, whoa. But the movie itself has an amazing cast. So I'm sure they'll pull it off. But I'm just a little nervous. It's the same as Aladdin. I'm like very nervous but I'm excited. Aladdin gets an A from me, so good. I was clapping after every number, and there was one other person that was clapping with me in the theater. At one point, my boyfriend looks over, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, shut up, I love this, I love it so much. The dancing in this movie, the choreography, the lady from New Girl who is Jasmine's handmaiden. I forgot how much I love Will Smith. The next movie I watched this month was shockingly evil and extremely vile and wicked, evil, extremely wicked, and shockingly vile. Is that what it is? With Zac Efron and Lily Collins. The story of Ted Bundy, the serial killer. And gosh, it was a ride. I'm a big fan of films that walk this horrifying line and make you think, and that's exactly what this film does. This serial killer, Ted Bundy, was so good at appearing to be a normal human being that wasn't chopping people up in his spare time. And they had him in jail and he got out of jail twice. Lily Collins' character, her arc is devastating. The struggle of being his girlfriend and having to see all this and put this person who you knew in a new perspective and rethink every moment you've ever had with them. It really makes you think about everyone you know because you never know. You never know who the f you're actually dealing with. I think Zac Efron was the perfect person to play Ted Bundy. He's got that thing, that charming thing, and you just want to believe him. This man it was sick and twisted and effed up. And I know I've heard some criticism of the film because the trailer had fun music and made it look kind of rom-com-esque because you get to see Ted Bundy with a family, with a girlfriend, but if you actually watch the film, like, it makes it even more horrifying. You watch this go down through everything that Lily Collins knows and sees. The next film I watched this month was Stan and Ollie, which is about Laurel and Hardy, a comedy duo that was popular in the early 40s. I really didn't know much about these men. I was very excited to see their comedic journey, but we actually start where they break up. They broke up as a comedy duo and 15 years later, they came back together to go on tour to hopefully raise enough hype to make another film together. It's about the friendship between these two men and their struggle to come back together and be the same duo they were before after 15 years of not working together. And so it wasn't the film that I expected it to be and while I had a good enough time learning about them and who they were together and apart, I didn't love it. I kind of expected it to be in the same format as the Charlie Chaplin film with Robert Downey Jr. I also recently watched the Buster Keaton documentary that just came out. I still enjoyed that more than I enjoyed Stan and Ollie. I wanted to hear like about how they became friends and rose to the status that they were as Laurel and Hardy, not how they fell and tried to climb back up. So I think I'll give this movie a B minus. It didn't give me enough emotions in any direction. The next movie I watched this month was Wine Country starring all my favorite comedy ladies, Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, Tina Fey, a woman from Saturday Night Live that's in everything, and more. And I went into this with very low expectations, but I actually really ended up loving it.
<laughs> it's the story about friendship. There are six women who've been best friends since they were in their late teens, early 20s, and they all work together in a pizza shop. One of them is turning 50, and they all make the effort to clear their schedules so they can go away together for a three-day weekend in Napa. It was so funny and so sweet, and I just really enjoyed myself. I'm going to give it an A-. minus. I sat there smiling for a straight two hours. It's the only TV show, it seems, that I watched this month, and I didn't actually watch it. I watched only two episodes so far. Third season of Riverdale. I'm in it. I'm going for it. It's finally available to stream. Part of the reason I like it is that it's so ridiculous and over the top. It makes no sense. And I love laughing about that. It just brings me so much joy while I'm watching it. But at the same time, I'm in it now. And the first two episodes of season three were batshit. Honestly, it was like, what, what the fuck? What's happening? And it was kind of scary. So I haven't watched it since because I was like, maybe I shouldn't watch this at night. And that was the only time I was having to like relax and watch a show was at night. I mean, I'm here for the ridiculousness. I'm excited for it, but I'm gonna have to maybe take a slower time if it's gonna scare me. The last thing I watched this month was another Netflix movie, Always Be My Maybe, with Ali Wong and that really funny guy from Fresh Off the Boat, the dad. I love him and I love Ali Wong. I had no idea this movie was happening. I went to watch something and it was just plastered on the home screen of Netflix. And I was like, oh my God, I love these actors. And I turned it on and I loved it so much. It is the sweetest. It's a rom-com, a girl and a dude who have been best friends since they were little. And it's always been like a will they, won't they sort of thing. And it was so great. Their comedic timing is amazing. I just had so much fun. Always be my baby. Definitely gets an A. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are all the stories I ate this month. I'd love to hear your thoughts on anything I talked about. What is your favorite live action Disney film? Are you excited? for the Lion King, are you a little scared? My name is Christine, I make videos every Tuesday. My book is out, it's called Again Look Better. It's in stores and available to buy online everywhere. It's a rom-com coming of age story about a girl who's having a hard time in college and decides to study abroad in London to try to do college again, but better. Links to the other in the description if you're interested. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.